Hi you guys. So we're almost finished our yellow on the big fish. We've got the top part of the tail done. We've got above the third vertical row done. Right down there. We've got the fin filled in there. We've got the vertical floating row here. We've got some at the top and the bottom of that. So we're going to put some more in here to create a little V at the back of the tail um, beside the neon pink. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention another tip, and that is brown paper sanding. This is paper specifically from like a large brown paper grocery bag. <clears throat> you want to use a piece that doesn't have ink on it on either side, and you just cut it down into like a small piece. And this acts like a really fine um, sanding paper, but it won't scratch your paint, and it uh, starts to give you a really nice smooth surface. So when you base coat your rocks, you want to give it a sand, keeping the paper flat. You don't want it to crease up at all, like so, or it can scratch, that will scratch your rock and your paint surface. But if you keep it nice and flat, just hold your hand over it and you can feel it makes a difference. Um, maybe not so much on a bumpy rock can you feel the difference, but on uh, when you're painting on like wood surfaces, you can totally see a difference and plastic and other smoother surfaces than the rocks. You also want to use it when you're finished when you're finished base coating your uh, little fishies. This will help smooth them out. I don't use it, uh, however, when I'm doing the mandala dots because I don't find um, it makes much of a difference. So, whenever you're base coating acrylic projects, um, I use that. For oil painting projects, I actually do use that too. It just helps keep things nice and smooth. I like to keep people guessing. So some of my paintings, I like the finished product to be so smooth that when you close your eyes and you run your hand over it, it feels like there's nothing there. I love that. But other projects, I love to pack on the paint too. So that's the nice thing with painting. You can do whatever you feel like. Okay, so let's come on back in and I'll show you how to finish off the yellow on our big fishy. So I'm going to use the second smallest size, the number four. And we're going to come in here. Let me move you over a bit. There you go. <clears throat> going to fill in here a bit on the V of the tail. On the V. On the V. Let me just switch my glasses. Please stand by. There we go. Okay. And starting to fill in there. And I'm going to come out to the outer edge here where it starts opening up wider. This outer edge here. And then I'm going to just go along that edge. Oh, I got a double one in there. A couple guys that are touching. So I'm just going to sneak them off with my number four filbert while they're wet. So I just dampen my filbert brush in some water. Take out the extra water on a piece of paper towel. Rinse that paint out and then make sure I get rid of all of this little residue that's left behind too. Because <clears throat> that little residue, if you leave it on there, it will dry and you will be able to see it underneath your dots. So take off anything that you can see there. Perfect. Now back to our yellow. And I'm going to fill in a little bit here. Well, that looks pretty dry in there already, so I can pop some back in there. I'm going to still try and keep an opening in the middle of the V, so I'll hop over here onto the other side. The reason I want to leave a bit of an opening is there, in there, so, so I can pop in some nice green after. There we go. There's our little tail filled in. So there's your yellow. Now this guy's eye doesn't have any color in it yet, and I think I'm going to leave it for the blue and the green, because <clears throat> those guys are nice colors. So while I'm getting my next colors ready, I'm just popping that into the floor fan that I have on the floor, which is very handy, you know, otherwise you can use a blow dryer on low, but the floor fan is nice because then I can go do something else while that's drying, either getting my next stuff ready or else. Um, I can be working on another rock and then my rock down there is drying so when the step that I'm working on is ready this guy's dry I can keep working on him so I'm just continually painting and I don't have to wait for anything to dry it's the best 
<clears throat> okay, we're off to green. So two more steps, the green and the blue. This will still be slightly wet, but it'll be a little more set up. Let's pop some color in the eye. So I'm going to go with the smallest stylus. No, that's a pretty big sized eye, so let's go a little bit bigger. I'm going to go with the second smallest, that's the number four. And I'm going to give him his eyeball in from the edge a little bit. And then I'm going to walk the dot above that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Like a little eyebrow. <laughs> and then I'll leave the rest of that area to come in with some blue. I like to start down here on these lower fin. Lower fin. So we'll, uh, this is the lower fin closest to the nose. So we're going to put in some angled dots that are creating a line, but they're on a slight angle. Like the fish, it's the fish's fin itself is on a slight angle. Now, I didn't put bubbles in with these guys. It did cross my mind. And as I'm painting these now, they look like bubbles that could be floating to the surface. So you certainly could do that, too. On this metallic turquoise background, they probably wouldn't show up as much. I guess I could do them in white. <clears throat> if you were doing them on a different colored surface, that would look pretty cool. Like, say, if you had a black surface, and then maybe your fish had a white base coat and the color on them or something. It, it's endless what you could do. But I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Please show me and send me photos of what you create. Because I would love to see it. And I'm happy to share your creations on my Facebook page. Let's paint with Sharon. And let's fit one more little guy in here. So there's my lower fin. Got five rows there. Let's do this back lower fin. He's got four rows there. There's one. So that's the largest sized one. So I can get the most dots in there. Not as much room with this next one. Because again, I want to leave room for the blue that will go in next. I love how when you dot, like you dip into the paint once, and then you dot, 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 and you just get all these different sizes just with one mode. I love it. So you can get a lot of work done pretty quick. Okay, let's do that on the tail too. that one a little bigger on the end there. So if you do have uh, a dot that you've created that's too small and you'd like it bigger, say that last dot I did, he's so tiny, if I just go on top of him with a bigger dot, we'll cover him right up. You won't see that first dot and you can end up with the bigger dot that you want. So there's three rows done. Now we've got three, four more rows to go. So I'm going to come up in here and fill in here around the yellow a little more. And then come on down towards the end of the tail. Again, I'm leaving room for the blue that will go in there later. What did you guys think of the, this color selection? Do you like the neon? I wonder how it would look under a black light. So there's the green on the tail and the lower fins. So let's head on up to that top flin. Flin? <laughs> fin. So all this section up here, anything that's open, anywhere you can fit in dots, you're going to fill them in with green going to clean that off and get a clean load before I start. Yes, I always use my shoulder. Let me show you here. I love, of course, always wearing painting clothes because that's the most fun when you can wipe your paint on yourself. But 
I always hit my shoulders. This, this was a clean top. <laughs> Thank you, Janine. For making me my Let's Paint with Sharon top. Now I'm breaking it in. So, if you see me out walking Santa, you'll see it. Paint on the shoulder and paint on the front of my jockey pants. Because <laughs> it, it, who wants to wipe on paper towel? It's just so much more fun to wipe on, wipe on your own clothing, let's face it. Okay, now back to our green dots. Because painting is all about having fun. We've got enough stress in our life, right? You need fun. And painting can do that for you. Because it is so fun. Especially when you're painting with other people or painting in a class. Oh my goodness, we have so much fun here in the classes in the studio. Yep, bachelorette parties have been fun. We have outdoor classes and the outdoor part of the studio are fun. So hopefully we'll be able to get back to that pretty quick here. Now that we're heading into uh, phase three and four of the openings. So let's see where I can fit some green guys in here in between the yellow. And I like to leave a little bit of black in between each dot. Helps show them off nicely. So if I find it's getting too tight, then I'll just switch my stylus and go to a smaller size like I just did. This is the smallest size stylus. And if you want to go even smaller than this, that's where those tooth toothpicks come in handy. You can get really tiny sized dots with the toothpicks. As I dot too, I'm always trying to rest my hand as much as I can on my surface. So this hand is resting right here. My other arm is um, stable, keeping me steady. If you have any questions about today's class, I'm happy to answer for them for you too. Yeah, there's lots of people out there creating mandalas right now. I, there's uh, lots of people on Instagram that I see and Facebook pages. It's fantastic. I love it. Here at uh, Let's Paint with Sharon, I do the mandala classes. I also do regular acrylic painting classes, oil painting classes, um, ink and oil classes, also called ink and oil version. I also do acrylic pouring. Uh, alcohol ink classes, uh, mixed mediums. I feel like I'm missing something in there, but. <clears throat> and for the acrylics, we paint on all sorts of different surfaces fabric, candles, glass, terracotta, rock, slate. We, you name it, I've probably painted on it. So here I'm just filling in wherever I have a little opening that I think I can sneak one in. My yellow dots are quite set up now, so if I needed to if I needed to take any of these green ones off, I wouldn't have to worry about mucking up my previous yellow dots because they're dry. So that's a real advantage to drying in little stages as you go. Like right there, I got a little bit too close with my green guys. And they're touching each other. So off you go. So anything you don't like you can just nick out of there. And then I think I like, I'm just going to clean off here. I do clean off the stylus quite regularly because the paint does get built up on the end there. And let's put some here through the yellow a little bit. Let's see. Oh yeah, I like it. So on the tail again we're leaving room for blue leaving room for blue on the bottom. I think this top edge here on the fin, I think that I might be able to fit some green ones in there. So let's see. Yes, I like the look of that. So if you're not too sure, just try it and you'll see if you like it or not. If you don't like it, you can always take it off. And over here I've got a lot more room in between the yellow so I can pop in a few green ones. Maybe even up here. Nice. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's your green. Those big fish are cool, eh? I had this guy so he looks like he's overlapping them. Just for some depth. 
So I'm just going to pop him down in front of the fan that's on the floor to dry him a little bit while I get my next color, the Decor Americana Multi-Surface Satin Blue Lagoon. And again, I just pour a little bit of paint in the cup, just a little bit, enough to dress my chisel edge. And then again, to cover up that lid, I'll take a new piece of paper towel that's been made smaller, fold it over a couple times, and then dampen that so the color of the paper towel isn't white anymore. It's wet. Not dripping, just damp. And then flatten that out like you're rolling out dough. So your last step is just filling in any other open areas that you have on your tail and your fin. So let's start on our tail. I'm going to use the second largest size, that's number five. I'll do a few here and then I'll show you closer up. So just whatever I can fill in around my green dots without getting too close to the black edge of my original base coat. I like the finer dots because I find it just makes it look kind of, uh, neat. I don't know, if the, not neater, but almost more detailed because they're tinier. So I'll do a couple more and then I'll show you. Look how fast you move along though, like that tail's half done. And it's really so fun to do. Certainly you don't have to paint them as fast as I am here just because it's the... Uh, because I'm doing the video. Take your time with it. I usually have a movie on and Isle Mandela. Super relaxing. Super, super relaxing. As I sigh heavily because I am so relaxed. So again, I was inspired by a tropical fish picture that I found online. I am including that picture in the pattern package just so you can see what my reference was, where I came from to get the ideas for this. But there's lots of tropical fish out there that you could get it from, that's for sure. But what about doing like a salmon or a trout? Look at the colors on a rainbow trout that you could do, would be super cool. So wouldn't that be a nice, wouldn't that have been a nice gift for a fisherman? Or for Dad for Father's Day. Well, Christmas is coming. It'll be here pretty quick. Okay, there's my tail. And like I say, when it's dry, it's so cool running your hand along all the bumps. I love it. So let's do this little lower fin. One more on that to go. One more little section. Almost finished. If you can hear that ruckusing behind me, that's just Santana, my border collie. <laughs> so there's the tail and the back lower fins done. Now let's do those front fins closest to the nose. I think I'm going to move up to a larger size, the second smallest size, the number four. When you do use the larger sizes, you will fill in a little bit faster. So 
just about halfway. Oh, I got two guys too close there. So I'm just going to pop them off with my damp Q-tip that I always keep close to me. I always have one that's damp and ready to roll. I don't have to take the time to wet it and then take out the excess paint. This is nice for cards too if you need to make a card for somebody. Think of like flower designs you could come up with that you could mandala. Okay, so I just have a little bit left on the tail to do. Excuse <coughs> me. You see on the stylus how the paint's creeping up the the steel rod a bit? That's when I know it's time to wipe them off and then get them back clean and then go from there. So I've just got a couple smaller areas, so I'm just going to go down to the smaller size stylus and pop in just a few tiny ones to fill. So there, the lower fin's done. Now I'm going to put some blue in his eye. So I'm using the second smallest size stylus. And I'm going to walk that around the bottom. And there's his eyeball. And there you have your finished large fish. So again, neon pink. Second coat on the largest neon pinks. Then neon orange. Then second coat to the largest neon orange dots. And then your school bus yellow. Then your neon green with a second coat to the larger neon green ones, and then your blue lagoon. Hmm. Now looking here, I see I have like a bit of an open area here with the orange, and I'm wondering if I should just leave that black or if I should fill that in a bit. I think I will fill that in a little bit. Let's go back to green and put some green in there. So this won't take me long, so I'm not going to worry about covering up that lid. I'm going to go in with my second smallest size stylus to fill in around these orange dots. Wherever I have room. that's in here. So I'm going to carry on just here. Wipe off my stylus before the paint gets too built up on it. Couple more down here. There we go. So there's your finished big fish. So there you have it, you guys. <coughs> You've got your. You now you know how to draw out your small fish how to transfer it onto a surface using the transparency in the graphite paper and a stylus, how to use your liquid brush cleaner and your leave-in brush cleaner, the difference between a brush tub and a little brush basin, and how to use the brush tub and the brush basin, how to base coat your rock, how to detail base coat in your fish. Uh, let's see what else did we cover. Do, do, do. 
using your styluses to create dots, what walking the dot is, and oh yes, the pattern packet. If you'd like to purchase the pattern packet, it has almost 300 step-by-step -step photos of the three small fish you see here, as well as the two large fish, and also the five fish that I was working on today. It'll have step-by-step -step photos of them, as well, um, the supply list will be included on my Facebook page in the comments section and in the events section for this video. And on my YouTube channel, I will have the links to those to the pattern packet. Uh, sorry, not the pattern packet, but the supply list. But if you'd like to purchase the pattern packet, it's by a minimum donation of $13. 20% of the proceeds will be going to charity. Uh, that 20% will be divided between Animal Rescue, our local food banks, and helping those less fortunate. So again, it's a minimum donation of $13. By all means, if you'd like to donate more, that would be fantastic. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been fun doing this. And I uh, can't wait to see you for the next video. And in between these videos, I'll be doing uh, shorter videos now. So my plan is to have one video that's a long one like this that'll have the supply pack, so the supply packet for purchase with it once a month. But in between that, have the shorter videos to show you guys different things like how to paint clouds or how to paint the sky, how to paint water, how to prep different surfaces. Oh yeah, I've got a long list planned for you guys. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Hopefully at the studio too. Yay, painting!